everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a video that's a little bit different to anything I've done before. It's not about the immediate care of an animal or any information on uh, an animal's training or care or grooming, etc, etc. Today is going to be a bit of a, what's the word, precautionary thing. No, not precautionary. What's the word? Today is going to be a video on just in case something happens to you, how you can best help your pets or your animals immediately after something happens. So the reason I'm doing this now is because I have recently moved out. I have started a new job. I'm not living with my parents anymore. I'm living by myself and I'm working with people who are absolutely fantastic, but they don't know me very well. They don't know me on a personal level. So they're not very familiar with my animals. So if, for example, I got clipped by a car on the way into work, or if I even like tripped and broke my leg and ended up having to go home for a while or something happened, no one knows what animals I have, which animal is which, how to take care of them, what they eat, etc., etc. So today I'm going to be just going through, not a will, but a list of care requirements for each of your animals that I believe everyone should just kind of have on hand just in case. Hopefully they will never ever be needed, but it's better to be safe than sorry. To start off, I'm going to just say really quickly, I at the moment have 10 snakes and I have one dog and that is it at the moment. That's everyone that I have here. So when I'm doing this list, I want to have one page per animal and I'm going to put in red the titles of each, um, each section and then the details as best as I can in pen. Now, my writing isn't very nice. <laughs> These, uh, my writing is very squiggly when I'm nervous. I'm nervous whenever I make videos, I am. So I'm always very squiggly when I'm writing. So I'm going to be writing in all capital letters because I want to make sure that people can understand what I'm saying. Because if they're reading this and they're relying on this, it's possible that I'm not around to actually explain what my writing says. So for this, we're going to want the name of the animal. We're going to want their species. We're going to want their age. A rough description of them so that they know it's not just, oh, the orange snake. I could have 12 orange snakes. I could have who knows how many snakes that all have orange on them. A, a very specific description and maybe their location. So if it's, if they always live, for example, Noodle lives in the very top tank I have. So I'll say Noodle, he is a normal morph ball python. And I'll put in brackets, maybe green, brown, black markings, whitish belly and then say should be in the top tank because at least that narrows it down for say if my mother was here trying to sort out animals and that sort of thing makes it a bit easier so location um what they're eating we'll mention water as well because reptiles they can't have the water straight from the tap it needs to be treated i don't know why that stopped focusing sorry uh what else will we mention we can mention just basic care so we're not doing a full care sheet of, oh, this is the temperature they need to be at and this is the humidity in the summer versus the winter. No, we're just basic care because whoever has your animals should know about that kind of stuff. So then what's the word for a person who takes, we'll say destination because I can't come up with a better word right now. So I have spoken to people about all of my animals and so far I think eight of the 10 snakes, I have someone in mind who would be happy to take them if I needed them to. So if I was in hospital for a long stay and I couldn't take them, I have friends who said, listen, I can take this animal because I know about them. I know how to care for them. So I can take them and mind them until you're better. Or if I'm out of the picture, I can take them and mind them indefinitely. So it's just, it's a conversation you should probably have when you're able to, if you're able to, and if, you're, if, if your friends aren't going to panic about you asking that kind of thing. So it's, again, just in case. It's better to have it than for your animals to possibly be abandoned because people don't know you have them. Like, I don't know if everyone in my workplace realizes that I have snakes. And if they do, I don't know if they realize how many I have. 
So if they don't know how many, they might come in, find four snakes, be like, oh, there they are, and leave. And my other snakes are going to starve and die because my work colleagues won't know. So it's not their fault that I may end up in hospital or something. And by their fault, I mean the snake's fault. So it's not the snake's fault. So it's my job as their owner and as their caregiver to provide the best I can for them while I can. And then try to provide the best I can after I'm able to as well. So destination, we're going to put down medication just in case it is necessary. Uh, none of my snakes are on medication. Beauty is because she's diabetic. Uh, what else is there that's there? Any allergies that you might have? Uh, I don't think any of my animals do, but at least I can write down that they have no known allergies so that people aren't trying to figure that out for themselves. Um, so we'll just say general health. So in general health, I can say that such and such a snake has issues with shedding. Such and such a snake has um, a smaller than usual size because they were small as a baby and they weren't fed properly. Whereas now it's not something to worry about. It's just stunted growth, that kind of thing. Uh, is there anything else that I can think of that I can stick down here for now? No, because everything else is kind of, if it's someone you're giving your animal to, they should know that ball pythons eat mice and rats and quails and things like that. They, they shouldn't be absolutely never seen a snake before in their life searching to see why it's got no legs. Like, they should know what they're talking about. So that should be the general, um, the general stuff that we'd need. So I'm going to make up one list and then I'll make the rest off camera because it'll take too long. And... I'll write down exactly how this is going to look. So this is my second attempt on this because I was halfway through talking through this and my phone said it was full of storage so I couldn't uh, I couldn't finish it and uh, to get more storage again I had to delete the video that I had just taken so this is me going for a second time although for you guys it'll be the first time. So completed the list there and I took my time doing it because I wanted to make sure I hadn't forgotten something important. Three things that I added into it was in relevance to behavior, documentation, and training. So, what I have here is I have name and species, so beauty, and she's a dog. I have her date of birth. Don't write down age, write date of birth, because then if you forget to update this for a good while, they'll know roughly what age animal to be looking for, or they'll know at least the rough age of the animal. If you don't have a specific date of birth, you could write down just the year, and they can do a good guess. Because if I write down, oh, she's six, then if I don't change this for two years, they'll be looking for a six-year-old dog, whereas she's actually eight. So just write down the date of birth, because at least it'll age with you, rather than having it being inaccurate by accident. Description. So I've said she is a Lab Collie mixed breed. She's mostly black with grey on the muzzle, white chest, white in the paws, and some white speckles on her flanks. She wears a red collar. So the reason I've written that down is just in case I'm found without beauty. So then they'll have a description of herself and some distinctive markings on herself, just so they know what to look for. If I change the colour of her collar and stuff, I'll have to update this. But at the moment, she's got a collar that she only really wears when she's in work. And that's it. So it should last for a good while. So it should stay red. And I just like red on her because um, dark colours are difficult to suddenly grab on a dark dog. So red is a nice bright colour that I'll know where it is. Documentation. So I've said she's got a microchip certificate, she's got a dog license and her vaccination card and they're all in my own personal folder. So I have a folder that's literally just labelled personal stuff and it's split into like stuff from my, from, from hospitals and stuff from pay slips and things like that are all split into different sections of it. And one section of it is literally just labelled animals and it is everything and anything to do with receipts from vets uh, beauty's microchipping and, and search and such like that. Um, anything in relation to basically anything and everything in relation to animals that doesn't deserve its own folder is put in there. So it should be easy enough for someone to find. Medical. Beauty is diabetic. She gets 12 units of insulin each morning, 30 minutes after her breakfast. So the reason I've written down the words instead of the numbers is because my ones and my twos when I write them down look the same. And I don't want her being accidentally overdosed and given 22 units if someone thinks it's a 2-2 two -two instead of a 1-2. So it's easier for me to just write down the full word because if they misread one letter, they'll still know it's 12. 
Whereas if they misread one number in one, two, she could end up with a completely incorrect dose. Uh, she has no known allergies and she is neutered. Now, I could have written down there she's microchipped as well, but she has a microchip certificate mentioned, so I'm sure that would be fine. And then the microchip cert itself will have the number of the chip and the details on it, etc. So it should be completely fine. Food and water. Beauty is fed twice per day. She receives 200 grams. Again, I'm writing down the word, not the number, just in case, of Gain Original Dog Food, which is a very popular brand here, so I'm not worried about people not knowing what that is. And she currently gets two You Move supplement tablets in the morning after her injection. So the You Move supplement tablets is only a supplement. It is not required for her health. So it's not in medical, it's in food and water. If someone does not continue that, she will not be any worse. It's just something I'm giving her as a precaution because she was so heavy for so long. She used to weigh 40 kilos, she now weighs 20. Because she was so heavy for so long, I am concerned about arthritis later in her life. And so I'm giving her this as a joint supplement to make sure that she stays in good health and that her joints don't suffer and just get a little bit of a boost. Uh, water ad lib, so she's able to have water as much as she wants whenever she wants because she doesn't have any sort of medical reason to restrict water or to only have certain amounts at certain times of the day, etc. Like some dogs would. Behavioural notes. Beauty is food aggressive. You cannot touch her while she's eating. If you touch her while she's eating, she will bite you. I can touch her when she's eating but she will freeze, she will stop eating and she will not continue eating until I stop touching her. So a stranger coming in or someone who she doesn't see very often, like I would even say my mother if she came in and if she walked up to Beauty while she was having her breakfast and laid her hand on her back and was petting her or whatever, I do not think Beauty would react well to that in the slightest. So for safety's sake, I'm going to write down here that she is food aggressive. So if something happened to me that someone in work said, listen, I'll mind her for the four or five days until you're out of hospital and able to take her back. During that time, she will have to be fed. And I do not want my coworker ending up in hospital alongside me going, hey, she got some nice strong teeth, doesn't she? I, I No, bad idea. So it's best to just write it down just in case. If she's got an item on the floor that she's not supposed to have, use a sweeping brush to take it away because otherwise you will lose your fingers. She absolutely adores children. She's completely safe to have around children for the children. However, she can become extremely protective of them. Now, this is a good and a bad thing because it's good because she will never harm a child. I would trust this dog with a child's life. However, if there was a child and the child was crying and the parent came over to pick up the child to take the child away to be like, hey, listen, we've got to go now. The child's like, oh, I want to pet the doggy. I have a feeling beauty would go for that adult. Now, beauty in her mind is protecting the child from this horrible adult that's running at the child and, and the child is crying and beauty's doing what she thinks is best, but it's really not a good thing. She will bite someone if they were to make a sudden move around a child that she was like, this is my child now. She's very motherly, which again, good thing and a bad thing. I'm sure she could live with children, no problem whatsoever, but you'd have to keep that in mind. So again, if a coworker of mine has kids around the place, I want them to be aware of this if they're minding her for short term or long term. Training, I've just mentioned training due to the fact that it's just handy for people to know what your dog is used to. It helps with their, um, what's the word? It helps with their routine. So if she goes somewhere and everyone's like, oh, give me your paw, give me your paw, and she doesn't know what that means. She's just going to be confused and upset. If someone's like, oh, slow down, slow down. She doesn't know what that means. I use the word easy. Easy is shorter and easier to say than slow down when I'm on the bike and I'm asking her to slow down before we stop. Hold means to stop and drop. So stop and sit your ass down. And that's what I use when we've stopped at a roundabout or if we're turning left or right on a road. It's important for her to listen and to sit suddenly. So if they're like, oh, slow down now, slow down now, take it easy, sit down there, she, she won't understand. So it's easier to just have the words down, what they mean. So easy means slow down, hold means stop walking, etc., etc. Just so someone can basically make it easier to talk to her and let her understand what's going on. So I've got the whole lot of it there. It's wait, stay, no, leave it, go left, go right, keep left, keep right, which is different. So if we're going down a... T junction, if we're going up the middle of the T and I say turn left, that's turn left. If we're going along something that's more like a Y and I say keep left and she's already on the left, she'll stay on the left. Whereas if I say keep right, she'll switch over to the right and stay on the right instead of turning altogether. So there's, there's differences in it, which someone who doesn't own her might not understand the way she's been trained. The part that's blocked out 
is the addresses that she would usually be found at. So this is important because of the fact that if I am at, I don't know, a midway point between my work and my house and I get clipped by a car, I trip and I hit my head and I pass out or whatever and I end up letting go of beauty and she runs away because she gets a fright. There's fireworks, there's cars, there's people running over and oh my God, are you okay? Like the dog freaks out, runs away. She is either going to wander around the place or she's going to go to a known address. So my address is written down, which obviously I don't want you guys having. My work address is written down, which again, I don't want you guys having. And then it's just useful as well for if I'm found near a petrol station because I decided to hop on my bike at lunchtime during work and cycle out and get myself a cup of tea or a hot chocolate or something because I was like, oh, it's cold or I want a slushy because it's too hot. If I get clipped or I end up having some sort of issue, they know that my dog is at work and it's a definite that my dog is safe at work and that's the address and also the address of the work would be handy because they can go there and say to my co-workers that, hey, listen, your co-worker is not doing so well. She's up the up the way at the petrol station. So it'll just be useful in that case. Very last thing I've written down here is, in the case of my hospitalization, death or other reasons that I cannot provide adequate care to Beauty, she is to go to my mother, Fiona, and transfer to her care. So she is to go to Fiona and Fiona is now in charge of her. Fiona is now her owner. And then I've also added that Fiona may do as she sees fit with beauty. So I am not going to... What's the word? How do I phrase it? I do not think it is fair to put an animal on someone when they agreed a long time ago and years down the line, suddenly they're responsible for an animal with food aggression, who's protective over certain things, who's on insulin and has to have a certain type of food and the money involved in that and regular vet visits, etc. When they agree to it so long ago that they may no longer be in the position to carry out that promise. So I'm saying Fiona may do as she sees fit with beauty, with, with beauty, because if at that point Fiona says, listen, I can't afford her. I'd love to, but I just can't. I'm 100% okay with Fiona rehoming her. Because if I'm in a state that she has gone to Fiona, I'm not going to particularly care anymore, am I? And I just want to make sure that my dog is well kept and well taken care of. So I trust my mother to find a good home for her that is able to provide both uh, money-wise and care-wise and so on and so forth for beauty. So in the case of something, I don't want her holding on to beauty out of guilt, saying, oh, but Rachel trusted me with it. No, 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 no. If you can't, you can't. That's it. Rehome the dog if it's necessary. Find someone else to take care of if it's necessary. Go to my brother's maybe. I don't know. But I've put it there to say, listen, this is okay. At the very end, I'm just going to sign it and I'm going to put the date. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to every... If there's any sort of issue happening, that's a big deal. Like say her insulin gets increased or decreased or if she has a sudden behavioural issue, or she gets clipped by a car and she loses a leg, something important, I will basically take this, rewrite it, and redate it. However, unless something big happens, I'd say I'll look over this once a year, once every six months or so, and just add to it or take away from it, write it out on a new piece of paper. Again, date it and sign it, and everything will be grand. And that way people know that it's as up-to-date as is possible, and all the details that are of crucial necessity to beauty are now written on paper. This is going to be folded up, put into an envelope marked in the case of my injury or death and put into a folder uh, that is in my house. And I'm going to photocopy it and I'm going to put in a second folder that's actually going to be carried in my bag. So if I am found and beauty is with me, my snakes aren't going to be with me. So only beauties is going to be with me. But if I'm found there's an envelope in my bag saying in the case of my injury or death, someone can take it, read it and go, right, listen, she has a dog with her ambulance taking the woman away. I'm going to take the dog to this work address and see if someone there can take care of her because they obviously can because it's a doggy daycare. Like they'll take her. It's all good. So at least then my family can be contacted, etc., etc. through my work. Everything will be fine. So beauty's one I'm going to photocopy and keep on me. The snake ones are all going to be put in with a second one for beauty in an envelope, clearly labelled and put into a folder that I keep in my house just for the purpose of in case. 
So I'm going to redo these. This can take me a little while um, for each one of my snakes. And for the snakes, it'll obviously be different. The training won't be a big thing. Behavioral notes won't be as big a thing either. Whereas I'll also write down for food and water, water is always going to be ad lib. Whereas food might be, oh, well, so-and-so takes a small mouse every two weeks. So-and-so takes a medium rat every four weeks and so on and so forth. It'll be different. Uh, documentation, unless your animal is a CITES animal where you've got a certificate that you need or a license you need to keep them, you're probably not going to have documentation for reptiles as much. And description, you're going to have to be very, very accurate in your description. I'm most likely going to get a picture of beauty and staple it to this just in case. And I'm going to do the same for my snakes because it doesn't matter how accurately I describe an orange snake with 13 dots on their back. Uh, snakes, people who aren't snake people are not very good at telling snakes apart and they might not be very accurate in which snake is which. So just in case, I'm going to see if I'm going to see about putting pictures of my animals onto these as well. So yeah, that was a video just on what documentation and what preparation you should do just in case uh, something were to happen to you short term, long term, or even just if I broke both my hands. If I break both my hands, I'm not going to be of much use to a dog, am I? I'm not going to be able to administer her insulin. I'm not going to be able to walk her well. And even though I am mentally capable and I'll be very sad about it, I am not the best person to be keeping her. Therefore, in that case, this is what would be used. So just, just, I would suggest for everyone to do this over a certain age to do this anyway, just in case something were to happen, especially if you live alone or if you live with only one other person. And it would just, it's just the peace of mind of knowing that if something were to happen, your animals are going to be okay. Now, it's not a will, it's not a legal thing, so people don't have to do what it says, but at least you've given the instruction as best as you can to just give as much details as you can about your animal to make sure that they're kept well. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it for this video. I hope it wasn't too heavy a topic. I tried not to make it too heavy a topic, but it's quite honestly that's just kind of what it is it is it is a in case of emergency this is what needs to be done but um yeah so if you if you have any suggestions for something else that should be added on to it or something that might maybe make it better I'd, I'd prefer to print it but I don't have a printer so I've just had to handwrite it or if you've got any suggestions of something like you've done yourself that you think might be of use or something that I could have done differently Feel free to let me know in the comments below and I'll read through them and see if there's something else that could be added in. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will do my absolute best to help. And thank you very much for watching.